Thrive. Hi guys, I'm Harry from Holistic Health of Harry and Alkalize to Realize Talk Show. Today we're joined by a very special guest, um, Nathan Walsh. And Nathan Walsh, you're a bit of an expert on, how would you describe yourself? You're an expert on quite a few things. Do you want to give us an intro? Yeah, hey, thanks so much, Harry. Happy to be on your show. I, I'm an expert in helping people increase their body's energy production at the cellular level. So teaching people about the, the essence of where their energy comes from, which is the mitochondria. So you've got a couple hundred to a couple thousand mitochondria in most of your cells. And when your mitochondria work well, guess what? You feel good. You have good energy. You're healthy. When they don't work well, that's when disease happens. That's when you get sick. And the problem is today, most people have no idea how to improve their mitochondrial health. So that's really what I help people focus on. That's, that's amazing. I love people talk about mitochondria. It's not talked about enough in the health community. So we appreciate having you on. Okay, so let's start actually with the very beginning of your story because some people might not know who you are. Um, how did you get into the position you're in now, helping people with health and all of this about mitochondria and light? How did you get into where you are now? Yeah, so uh, I've, been, I've been working with people as a health coach one-on-one -on -one for the past four years. I'm a speaker as well, speaking at different corporate events, helping uh, employees optimize their performance. But before that, I was in corporate America. So I had a corporate job for 20 years. And probably about 10 years into my career, I started noticing that my energy was waning. My sleep wasn't that good. I would have, after lunch, I'd have food coma, indigestion. So I'd be like eating lunch and, and running to the bathroom and then just kind of um, not being very productive for the next couple hours after lunch. And then I started having, and this happened kind of slowly over many years. So in the beginning, it was occasional fatigue. Occasionally, I wouldn't sleep well. And over time, it became more and more my kind of new normal. And then I started getting chronic back and shoulder pain. Wow. I spent a lot of time on a computer. So it's just hunched over. And, you know, I'm still trying to, to fix my posture from that. Hmm. But um, well, then I started getting brain fog, anxiety, depression. And uh, it was just, it was getting worse and worse. And what was really kind of weird about it is I looked very healthy from the outside. So I actually, for the most part, I ate pretty healthy though I did binge on junk food now and then, and I was a pretty big drinker on the weekends, so that wasn't so good. But I went to the gym, I worked out. So people would see me without a shirt on, they'd be like, man, you look great. And I'd be talking to my friends, just being like, you know what, something's not right. I'm just, you know, I'm tired all the time, I'm dragging, and they would just look at me like I was crazy. Be like, what are you talking about? Like, you look great. And for a lot of people, it's very hard to like, see someone that looks good, and then hear that they, they don't work, that, that they don't feel good. It's kind of a mismatch. I would go to my doctor every year or two and just be like, hey, doc, something's not right. And most people know with like, when you don't feel well, it's, it's very apparent. And it's very obvious when you're out of sorts. And I would tell my doctor, you know, something's just not right. I don't know what it is. He would run the standard blood labs and everything always came back in, you know, the normal range. Hmm. And he kind of chalked it up to stress, which was true. I had a lot of stress. I had a stressful job. My way of dealing with stress was drinking on the weekends. And uh, he said I was getting older. But when this stuff started going down, I was in my early 30s. Mm. Mm. So I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's not very old. I'm well, almost 50 now. I still I'm don't 32. think I'm old. I'm 32 now, and I don't feel I'm old. So, yes, if you're going downhill yeah, at 32, Nathan, that's not a good sign, was it, <laughs> at all? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not old. So if, you're, if your doctor's telling you, like, you're getting older in your 30s, I mean, partially it's a true statement. You are getting older, but you're not old and you shouldn't be having symptoms in your 30s. Yeah. So anyway, this went on for many years. Eventually I got referred to an integrative medicine doctor. And uh, for those who don't know what integrative medicine is, is they, they do conventional medicine, but they also look at your hormones, your vitamin levels, and they, they do a lot of other testing that a general practitioner doesn't do. So this guy sat down with me for an hour. He asked me all sorts of questions. And he was, he was like, I think you have Lyme disease. Hmm. And uh, for those who don't know what Lyme disease is, it's a bacterial infection that you get from ticks. I think you can also get it from mosquitoes and some other insects as well, though we have limited proof on that. But um, I didn't really know much about it other than that you get it from ticks. And I never found a tick on me. So I was just like, there's no way I have Lyme disease. But he, you know, he tested my blood, my pee, my poop, uh, my saliva. You know, he did uh, an ASI. He tested me for everything. And it turns out I tested positive for Lyme disease. 
I have had heavy, heavy metal toxicity, like high levels of mercury. Wow. I had candida, which is a fungal overgrowth in your intestines. My hormones were super low. My vitamins and minerals, lots of those were really low too. That happened, I was like, yes, I'm not crazy. <laughs> now I know what I have so I can address it. Hmm. And I was just like, tell me what to do. I, I just want to get better. So he put me, first I was on antifungals for the candida. Then he put me on a whole bunch of antibiotics and a ton of supplements. So I let, after my second visit with him, when we reviewed all my tests, I walked out of his office with 12, I think it was $1,200 of supplements that he very happily sold me. Hmm. At the time I was in corporate America, I had a good job. So it was just like, that was no big deal to me. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I was popping like literally, Harry was a full-time job every morning, popping all these supplements, taking these antibiotics, and they made me feel hor The antibiotics made me feel horrible. Really? Okay. Yeah. Antibiotics, oh, yeah. right? Anti. Yeah. Antibiotics. Antibiotics. Yeah. yeah. So what happens when you have an infection? If you kill too much off at a time, you get what's called the Herxheimer reaction. So your body gets overwhelmed with these these toxins. It has an immune response, and it's too much of an immune response, and you just you feel horrible. So for lots of people, you get flu-like symptoms. But often the Herxheimer reaction can be worse than the actual thing you're dealing with. So this went on for several months. And I was meeting with the doctor every two weeks. And I would just be like, hey, doc, you know, after the first month, I was just like, when am I going to start feeling better? And, um, you know, he, never, he was just kind of hem and haw. And, you know, this went on for many months. And I stuck with this doctor longer than I should have. I stuck with him for six months. And about four or five months into it, I just started doing a whole bunch of research on my own. Um, some of that research was on how to get better, but I also found a different doctor because I didn't like his approach. Of, you know, I was on three different antibiotics at a time, and he would just switch them up every month, taking them three times a day. Mm. So just flooding my body with antibiotics, trying to kill this, this spirochete, this Lyme bacteria. Just a quick one. Do you think the antibiotics maybe killed all the good bacteria in your gut that kind of made your health even worse? Like, or oh, hell yeah, absolutely. Yeah, guess what your mitochondria are. What are they? Tell me. <laughs> I'm interested. They're, they're bacteria too. Oh, okay. So oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. Mitochondria are bacteria. So wait they're, a minute. You're saying that antibiotics kill, mito kill the mitochondria too? They're killing what? I didn't know this. Yeah, well, so, so I'm not necessarily saying they, they kill, kill your mitochondria. Hmm. You know, I haven't seen like a lot of evidence on that, but they definitely impair it. Yeah, well, impairing is the same to me, isn't it? It's almost as bad. So, wow, that's good, that's good information for people. And yeah. if the mitochondria is impaired, you're going to be less energetic and, and go downhill, right? Downhill fast. Exactly. So, so antibiotics aren't selective. They don't just go out there and kill bad bacteria. They kill all bacteria. So, you, you know, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. At the time, I didn't know this. So, you're basically, you're killing all your bacteria that break down your food which that's, you, you can't get vitamins from your food if you're not effectively breaking it down. And your, so your gut makes a lot of your hormones. Hmm. So if you have low hormones, you're taking all these antibiotics, your gut, you know, you don't have the healthy bacteria in your gut to break down your food, right? Yeah. So it leads to a host of problems. In the short term, mm -hmm. I, I think it's fine. You know, if you get nailed with a really bad bacterial infection, Sometimes it makes sense to take antibiotics. I don't believe it makes sense to take antibiotics long term, months and months and months. Um, so anyway, so I, I started doing all this research on the internet. I was trying different diets. I went vegetarian for six months and I ended up getting very emaciated. So I went from you know 170 pounds, which is about uh, like uh, 80, 85 kilo, down to 100 40 pounds Whoa. and I was pretty thin as it was so I was just you know I went from telling people that something wasn't right to them not believing me to people looking at me like like people thought I had cancer or something Whoa. because I was just my skin I was very just gray and just skinny and like too skinny mm. yeah. and uh, so I was doing all this research I eventually came across a guy by the name of Dr. Jack Cruz and Harry, I, I believe you followed him too. Yes, big time. Yes, a good guy. Hmm. Yeah, so I came across, you know, one of his blogs and I read it. I was just like, I didn't understand a lot of it at the time because my brain was just totally shot. It wasn't working well. 
but I knew like, okay, this guy's different than anybody else I've come across. And at this point I've been doing months and months of research. So I started out with um, some of his protocols. You know, I had been vegetarian. So I started with his dietary protocols, which is a high seafood diet, which was like, hell yeah. Because I was, when I was vegetarian, I never felt satiated. I was eating all this food. It took a long time to eat it. Mm. it took me a long time to fill up. And then an hour or so later, I'd be hungry. So I was just, I was always eating. I was skinny as fuck. Oh, sorry about swearing. It's all right. Super skinny. I was always eating. I just never felt satiated. So now all of a sudden, I'm eating like seafood and, and fats and stuff. I'm just like, oh my God. So right there, that, that was huge. And then I started doing his cold thermogenesis protocol. Mm. And within two to three weeks, I was feeling better than I had in months. And I was just like... Was that okay. um, cold showers? Just cold, tra- cold showers and cold baths? Is that what the cold thermogenesis is? Yeah. So I was doing full body submersion. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, what do you mean? A cold bath, just plunging your whole body in cold? Cold bath. Yeah. So there's a, there's a process so that if you want to, you know, if you're curious, cold, cold, you know, I'm not crazy about cold showers, to be honest. I'll do them after the sauna in the gym, but like if I'm at home and just take a shower, take a hot shower. Mm, sure. Uh, but I'll do full body submersion. And if, if you want to start out, the best way to start out is to fill a bowl with ice water and, and just hold your breath and plunge your face in there for as long as you can. That actually starts the whole adaptation process to adapt your body to cold because nerves come down from your brain. You have these trigeminal nerves and when cold hits them and also you have this mammalian dive reflex, that creates a biochemical change in your brain that starts to adapt you to the cold. So the cold does a couple things. It significantly reduces inflammation. So anybody that's dealing with a a sickness or disease, you have inflammation. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So that reduces inflammation. It also makes you more sensitive to your hormones. So one of the things I was dealing with were low hormone levels. Mm. And we, you know, one of the hormones we briefly discussed before we turned on play here or record is testosterone. So I had very low testosterone. I had historically I always had like a super high sex drive. Mm. And you know, my sex drive went away. My my testosterone was super low, um, low for, for my age. And um, just, you know, from within a few weeks of doing, doing these cold baths, I could tell my testosterone was, was coming back. That's very interesting. This is new information to me, a little new angle. So you're saying that the endocrine hormonal system generally, not just even the sex hormones, the whole hormonal system is affected by mitog- um, hemesis of cold, cold thermogenesis somehow enhances the function of hormones. Well, yeah, what it does is it makes your body more sensitive to hormones. So there's two sides to hormones. There's your hormone levels. Mm-hmm. So ideally, you want your hormone levels to be optimized towards like the top end of that healthy range. You can have hormones that are too high as well. So I don't want to say like super high hormones. You want them optimized to those perfect levels. But the other side is your sensitivity to those hormones. Okay. So you have hormone receptors that have to uptake those hormones. So insulin resistance. Insulin is a hormone. When you're insulin resistant, for example, you can't convert, you can't get that glucose into the cell to be converted to energy. And over time, you can turn into a diabetic. So you want to be very sensitive to your hormones. So cold makes you more sensitive to those hormones. So you can have a lower level of hormones, hmm. but you're more sensitive to them. Oh, okay. okay. So, they're, so they work better for you. I see. Like, yeah, like you said, insulin resistant, it means you're less sensitive to that because you've been not been eating right. You've been eating too many sugary foods and stuff. So that makes, that's really powerful what you just said there. So you can increase your sensitivity. You can have a smaller amount of hormones, but increase the sensitivity if you do something like cold thermogenesis. That is very interesting. I need to look exactly. into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It also balances out your hormone levels because you, you, you're meant to have the proper proportions of your hormones for you to work optimally. So, for example, if you go and you, you do bioidentical hormone replacement, let's say the doctor just gives you one hormone, so testosterone. And before I knew all this stuff, I was actually, I was on a testosterone gel. You rub this, this gel on your body. So in the short term, you can have some good benefits. But in the long term, that's going to, you know, you've got positive and negative feedback loops in your body. So you want everything to be at the right level. Right. Yeah. And the cold helps everything be at the right level because your 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 body, you know, your endocrine system is a is the system that's meant 
to have the proper level so everything works. So I'll give you like one example, you know, hormone in your brain is called a neurotransmitter. So let's take dopamine and serotonin, for example. One second, sorry, sorry for this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry, carry on. So we, where were we? Hormone sense. Yeah, no problem. So I just, I'm just giving an example about um, an imbalance in your hormones or neurotransmitters and what can happen. Mm -hmm. So for example, serotonin acts as the break for dopamine. Okay. So dopamine, that's your, your drive, your motivation, helps you feel good, helps you think well. But too much dopamine can lead to bad things. Too little dopamine can lead to bad things too. So dopamine is your drive, right? It's, it's our drive to eat. But once we've had enough to eat, or it's also our drive for pleasurable things, things like sex or just having a good time, so having a drink. Mm -hmm. But then serotonin comes in when you've had enough. So let's say you have like a glass of wine and you, you start to feel, you know, kind of happy. Then you have a second one and you're like good at, at two, right? Then serotonin comes in and it kind of stops that urge to have another drink. But when you have an imbalance, you don't get that, that uh, impulse from serotonin or the stimulus from serotonin telling you you've had enough and you keep on drinking or in sex, you know, you, you become a sex addict. Maybe you do too much porn. Maybe you're in a relationship and all you can think about is sex and then you hook up with other people. Mm. So all these things are balanced by your hormones or, or your neurotransmitters. Mm. And when you have an imbalance, that's when you run into problems. And if you look around at what's going on in the world today, there's a lot of people that have problems with addiction, mm. uh, opiate addictions, you know, sex addictions, gambling addictions. Facebook uh, addictions, social media addictions. Uh, yeah, huge, huge. Facebook, that's a huge addiction, right? And it's, re it's literally, it's changing the, the neurochemistry of people's brains. So younger, younger people, children are more sensitive to it than adults. It's messing up adults too. I mean, there are definitely adults addicted to uh, social media. Most adults that have professional careers are even not professional, um, but people that rely on their phone they're super addicted to their phone, right? Yeah. You take away their phone for a day. If you tell them you can't have your phone for a day, they're going to freak out, right? Mm. So yeah, that's a super good point. Yeah. Just to go back a little bit. So we, 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 that's good information. You were at the point where you're saying you were doing cold thermogenesis showers and I stopped you and we went, we had on a detour, which is a brilliant detour, I must admit. But um, so you were doing the cold thermogenesis showers and you said you were vegan at some point, a uh, vegetarian, you lost a lot of weight. And then you, you went on the cold thermogenesis and do you want to carry on with your story a little bit from that point onwards? Yeah, well, so I, I was vegetarian for a period. I, I found Jack Cruz. I went on his, uh, he calls it the Epi Paleo RX, which is basically, it's a paleo diet with seafood at the top of the uh, food chain that, that you want to eat, mm -hmm. but also other, you know, pastured meats, pastured animals. Um, but it's basically, it's, it's meat, fat, vegetables, it's seasonal fruits. Mm -hmm. So no bananas in the winter, for example. So you're in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bananas don't, don't grow in the UK. I'm in upstate New York. Bananas don't grow where, where I live. So do I, eat, do I never eat bananas? No. Occasionally I have a banana, but a majority of my food is food that I eat in season. So back to my story. So I did, I changed my diet up. I was doing full body submersion in cold water. Mm -hmm. The next thing I learned about is how blue light controls our circadian rhythm and our circadian rhythm. That controls growth, metabolism, and hormones. Mm -hmm. Right. So what is growth? Your cells, your body's continually regenerating your skin cells, your bone, your muscle, your cartilage. When your circadian rhythm is off, you have an impaired growth mechanism. So a lot of people today, for example, they are they're having we're seeing a lot of meniscus tears. Your meniscus is in your knee. Rotator cuff tears, degenerative disc disease. Mm -hmm. People having back problems. What is that? Your body's not doesn't have good growth. It's not regenerating those, those cells, whether it's in your, your back, your disc, or your, your tendons, things like that. Metabolism, converting food to energy. When you have poor metabolism, you gain weight, you get fat. Other metabolic diseases are things like heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Those are all metabolic diseases. And then your hormones. Your circadian rhythm controls your hormones. So for example, I was up you know, before I found Jack Cruz, I was up late every night on the computer, Googling, doing research, trying to figure out how to get better. And this is very common for people that are sick. They go to their doctor, their doctor can't figure it out. 
they turn to Google, they turn to the internet, and they'll be up late into the night doing this, which is actually adding to their sickness because it's further destroying their circadian rhythm. They're not sleeping when they should be. Yeah. Learn the value of sleep. Started going to bed earlier. Mm. Blocking blue light. So wearing, um, you know, these were my first oh, blue wow. blocking glasses. Not this this one, but this model. Yeah. I see those, started, I those are a lighter model. They don't completely block all the red. Is that a lighter version? You know, the orangey ones compared to, or is that pure like? Yeah, very so, this, so these block up to 500 nanometers. Mm. Okay. So for someone that is just hearing about this and they're just like, I don't know about this, there are more stylish options. So these are blue blocking glasses for daytime. These are pretty expensive for most people. And if you're just like new to it, most people aren't going to want to spend $120 on glasses. So, so these are like $10, $11. So they're not the best out there. But if you're just like, you know what, my sleep's not great. Maybe I'll check this out. You know, these are good. These are fit overs. So if you have prescription lenses, you can get these. Mm. Uh, Nathan, quickly, I've got ones that are quite cheap. Called, I think I've got it off you actually when you're on Extreme Health Radio. So I've got drapers that are over two. They can wear over glasses, but these ones are really strong. So when I look at it now, it's completely red. I, it's yeah. completely red. Not so, so that's up to 550 nanometers, huh? Oh, these ones are proper, yeah, proper, pro and they're cheap too. So these are cheap alternatives for people if they want to. Drapers, I think they're called. So. Yeah. Drapers, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is another pair. So this block's up to 550 nanometers. This is from uh, Blue Blocks, which is out of Australia. Mm. But um, yeah, once the sun goes down, this, this is what I wear. And, um, you know, in the beginning, Harry, when I first started doing this, this was back in 2000. I found Jack Cruz in September 2014. Mm -hmm. And nobody was wearing blue blocking glasses then. Really? Nobody? All oh, right. Okay. Well, nobody, I, people were, but I did Very rare. Yeah. Not that many people are wearing them today. Mm. Five years ago, even less people were wearing them. Mm. Nobody in my circle of friends wore them. And, uh, you know, people would come over. To, I only wore them at, at my house, but people would come over to my house at night and just like, what the heck are you doing, man? Yeah. But, uh, you know, you have to make a choice between um, people thinking you're, you're weird and your health. And when people get to a certain point of poor health, you know, you got to choose your health and it becomes a pretty easy choice when you start feeling bad enough. Right. Cause you've got to quickly explain to people why, why we're wearing blue blocking glasses, what they're doing. Why, why is it so dangerous to look at blue lights, for example, or the blue lights from a screen at nighttime or even just normal, uh, just normal lamps without these blue blocking glasses. Why do people even need to wear these stuff? You know, do you want to explain quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So the, the frequency of light emitted from, energy efficient light bulbs in our screens. So screens being your cell phone, your computer screen, your TV screen, your tablet screen, any, L any screen, they're LED screens. So the lights they use are, are LEDs. And the frequency of light, a majority of that is in the low 400s. So the visible spectrum, it's from like 380 to 700 nanometers. Blue light is uh, you know, 400 to, to 470, 480 or somewhere in that range. But the, the the range you're most sensitive to is 435 to 465 nanometers. So you have a blue light detector in, in your eyes and on your skin. Mm. It's called melanopsin. So it's very sensitive to light in that range. And the majority of spectrum emitted from your screens and from energy efficient lights, LED light bulbs, uh, fluorescent light bulbs, there's compact fluorescent bulbs, the spirally looking ones. It's in that range. And Historically, we haven't been exposed to that frequency of light at night. So if you go back, just, uh, you know, the incandescent light bulb was invented 140 years ago. Before that, the only light we had at night was candlelight or, or a lantern. That's red light. Mm. So that doesn't impact your circadian rhythm. So when you're on your, your phone at night, when you're on your computer, that light sends a signal to your brain that it's daytime. And a hormone that you need to get into a deep restorative restful sleep is melatonin. So those frequencies of light tell your brain it's day, stop producing melatonin. So you can fall asleep without melatonin, but you've got four stages of sleep. Without melatonin, you're not getting into stage three and four. So three and four, that's when the magic happens. So at night, your body detoxifies itself. We're all exposed to toxins, whether driving in traffic, breathing in car fumes, or just chemical, airborne chemicals from chemical, just from factories and 
pollution or water or anything like that. But your body is meant to detoxify and not get rid of that. You get up in the morning, you have that, that first morning pee, you're detoxifying a lot of th things. You know, you have your bowel movement, getting rid of stuff that doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you don't get into a deep sleep, your body's not doing that. It's also, it's repairing damage that your cells get during the day. So you need melatonin to get into that deep sleep so you can repair, restore. So if, you, if you're in bed for seven, eight hours and you're waking up and you don't feel rested, it's because you're not getting into those deep stages of sleep. Mm. You're not getting a restful sleep. And when this goes on for a period of time, when you're young, you can get away with it. Your body's resilient. Your human body is amazing, re, amazingly resilient. Mm -hmm. And I had 10 years of, you know, before I started having symptoms, you, my, my sleep wasn't ideal. And I was staying up late, going out, partying, you know, being out exposed to this light. So I wasn't getting restorative sleep. My body was able to deal with it for a number of years, but then it kind of hit its limits. That's when I started getting my symptoms. And by then it was kind of too late because I had already messed up my sleep. So I was getting sleep. I was getting more symptoms. My sleep was getting worse. It was just a downward spiral spiral because I, my body wasn't repairing itself. It just continued to degenerate to get worse and worse. Just a quick one, whilst you're talking about um, not only the hormone levels, um, you can take it when you're younger, also your hormone levels peak around the 20s too. So you've got a massive dump of testosterone, but the, and DHA melatonin too, it peaks at 25, then it goes downhill. So you can get away with it because you've got, you could take more abuse, but also your, your hormones are at its absolute peak. So maybe those blue lights won't impact you as, as a young age. You can still produce a lot of melatonin, even if you're looking at blue screens before you go to bed, you still produce enough. But as we get to our 30s and 40s, it's just, you can't because now your melatonin levels are drastically decreasing as we get to our 30s and 40s our hormone levels are going really a lot down especially for unhealthy too right yeah that, that, that's a that's a super good point so um yeah, yeah as you age your hormone levels naturally decrease so another so for those kind of new to this at night once the sun goes down you want to wear blue blocking glasses so yeah. you, not just glasses so your, your eye is the most sensitive to these frequencies of light but your skin also has these light, these blue light detectors on them. So at night, you want to cover up your skin as well, as much as you can. So I really limit my computer work at night. I do have a, uh, a program on my computer, Iris, which reduces the blue light. That's excellent. I highly recommend people look into that too. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, but also, I don't watch it. I used to be a big TV person, not so much anymore, but sometimes I'll watch TV at night if I do. I've got a hoodie on. Mm. the only thing really exposed are my hand, you know, I'll put socks on, but you know, my hands are exposed. Another thing you want to protect during the day is, is your thyroid. So I, I'm not super good about protecting it because I've got a window right here. So I'm getting, it's open. I'm getting the full spectrum of light. I have blue light reduction on my computer, but if I worked in an office setting or if I worked in a store mm. where I didn't have an open window and I just had the artificial lights, I'd be covering my thyroid yeah. because your thyroid blue light penetrates, you know, a centimeter or so into your skin. Your thyroid is just right here. Mm -hmm. The blue light can penetrate to that depth. So blue light, not only does it turn off your body's production of melatonin, it's a very high energy part of the spectrum. It causes inflammation. So not just in your eyes, but your thyroid too. So that's something to be aware of. Another hack, Harry, that you may not be aware of at night, do you want to wear a hat? So especially outside a lot of the street lamps, there are also LED lights now. But your photoreceptors in your eye is at the bottom of the eye. So you don't really have to be worried about ambient light from the side or bottom affecting your, your uh, melatonin at night, but it's the light from above. So I, I'll wear a baseball cap if I'm going out in public at night to, block, to protect that light that's coming down from above from the street lights. That's a great tip. I didn't know that. So the top of the eyes is the worst one for bad light and you're going to, it's best to block the top and not, don't worry about the sides and the bottom as much as the top. Correct. Yeah. Because where, where's the sun? Oh, there we go. I was thinking that was, you were saying it as well. Yeah. It's above, isn't it? Just, oh yeah. That makes with nature. The sun comes from above and yeah, that makes sense. Huh. Yeah. Smart, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing how nature works, right? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so where were we? Um, right. So we got to, 
um, all the stuff you were doing and um, vegetarian and you um, you changed transformed at 30 years old you were doing you were focusing on your sleep focusing you put your you recommend people focus on their sleep melatonin blue blocking glasses are essential after nighttime also you're saying um, to protect the thyroid um, to wear clothes as much as possible because the blue light's going to penetrate and hit the skin right um, create free yeah. radicals. So, hmm. yeah so I was Harry I, actually, I was in my 40s when, when I came across Jack Cruz and so this this started in my 30s but I was just I went 10 years like in the beginning it wasn't that bad and you know like I was saying I would just go to my doctor and he would tell me like you're fine and I just kind of part of me went with it but part of me was like yeah something's not right so yeah so the changes I made I was dietary changes seafood based diet um I had gone gluten free before that as well cool I do I'll occasionally eat some gluten now. So I, my health is, is complete. You know, I wouldn't say it's 100%. You're, you can always raise the bar. Sure. Yeah, I can. But if I want to go out and have some pizza or, you know, if I'm at a nice restaurant and I have a nice bread basket, well, I'll, I'll eat bread now. But before, when I was dealing with what I was dealing with, I was very strict about cutting out gluten. Mm. So, yeah, blocking blue light. Cold. The next thing I learned watching the sunrise oh lovely yeah do you want to talk a little bit about that i'm huge on sunrise sunset from jack cruz and people like you and justin stillman and yeah talk a little bit about why would why would looking at the sunrise it's just the sun right why would that be healthy to the human avatar yeah so a couple of reasons so when the sun is rising there's this the sun has a color temperature so at sunrise at color temperature it's about 1800 kelvin then at noon, the color temperature is around 6,000 Kelvin, between 12, 12 and 1 or so. So the color temperature of, of an iPhone, for example, is about 6,000 Kelvin. So what do most people do first thing in the morning? They're looking at a midday uh, sun. Text to me. Hmm. Let me check my email. Let me check my Facebook. Let me check my Instagram. So you're getting that signal in your eye that it's noon. Yeah. Do you know how I look at it as well? People might not like this one, but I look at it like, you know, people say don't look at the sun at midday, especially because it's really powerful. Well, isn't, aren't we looking at a midday sun with the, with the blue screens first thing in the morning? Isn't that kind of similar? The same, you're saying it's the same power. Is it not the same thing? Like looking at a midday sun? Well, it's, it's the same color temperature. It's not the same lux. So mm -hmm. it has a much stronger intensity than, than your iPhone. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the color temperature is basically kind of the, the percentage of blue light. Mm. So, but in the morning, the color temperature, the, the amount of blue light is shifting very rapidly. So this stimulus tells your, your, so your main circadian clock, it's called your supracosmetic nucleus. So that, that light, when it goes in, into your eye, it goes into your supracosmetic nucleus. You don't want to have any glasses on when you're doing that, because that's going to alter the spectrum that your eye sees. Yeah. So your, your eye, you know, this, this uh, light, blue light detector, it can tell the color temperature. And it's very sensitive to the shifts in color temperature. So the number one reason you want to watch that sunrise is to set your circadian clock. Cool. That way you have optimized growth, metabolism, hormones. It also, that blue light, so in the morning, it's the visible spectrum of light, and it's also infrared light. Yes. So it's 42% infrared A light which is, so the red part of the spectrum, it's very regenerative. So just getting exposed to that light, it's anti-inflammatory and it helps regenerate and your body can actually make energy from those frequencies of light. Yeah, uh, just a quick one. I, I'd like also, um, studies show that it enhances the mitochondrial function. Now we're not entirely sure why, but it, the mitochondria are just basically singing and dancing. If you, if you um, even look at sun gaze, people say to a sunrise sun, but if you don't, if you just get your eyes to out of the sunrise sunset time too, it's just lighting up the mitochondria. And um, for me personally, the more skin I expose, the more I assume that the, the levels of mitochondria. So if I expose my arms, my arm mitochondria, if I expose my heart, my heart mitochondria are just gonna sing and dance. And certainly I've noticed very powerful activation of some energy system and I can only assume it's the mitochondria of what people are saying from just being outside of sunrise with bare skin bare eyes uh, um, to the sunrise so, yeah 100 yeah, percent. and people that want to learn more about that can research photobiomodulation or low level light therapy so we have a lot of research on that that these frequencies of light make energy so red light it actually penetrates up to 30 centimeters into your skin it penetrates through your skull 
So you're right. So the more skin you have exposed, the more light your body's going to absorb. So those photons from the sun, that energy goes into the electrons in your red blood cells. Yeah. So some of us have the ability to be totally naked in the morning. So with me, I live in an apartment and my balcony faces east. So I can be inside my apartment with the door open and be naked and no one can see me from the outside. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You're right. very lucky. Very lucky. Yeah, not everybody has that ability, but they're, you know, you can kind of, most people have a window in, in their place that faces east. So there are kind of ways that, that you can hack it. If you don't have that ability, they sell um, tan through swimwear. It's called Kaniki. So you can be in that and, you know, still get that full body exposure. I'm wearing but, Kaniki now, actually. I'm wearing Kaniki shorts now. Yeah. I got it from Matt Blackburn, but you're right. Kaniki shorts, tan through. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's good stuff. That it really is powerful. Yeah. So even if, you know, all of your skin is not getting exposed, that energy, it's being transported through your blood. The energy from the photons is going into your red blood cells. It's being transported to the rest of your, of your body. But that, yeah, so that light, it's penetrating your skin. It actually creates an SPF equivalent of 15. Interesting. So it creates these anti-inflammatory compounds. We now have evidence that infrared light actually creates melatonin. So you have two kinds, melatonin. So you have a circulatory melatonin, which is released in the absence of light. So at night, as long as you don't have any blue light shining in your eyes or you're wearing your blue blockers, you're covering your skin, your pituitary gland releases melatonin. So melatonin has a couple of different roles, but then you also have subcellular melatonin. So that's inside your cells, your mitochondria can make melatonin from infrared light. So melatonin, we've talked so far that it's good to help you get into a deep sleep, mm -hmm. plays a role in your circadian rhythm, but melatonin also controls the health of your mitochondria. Yeah, you, runs, that's really powerful, you just said it. Sorry to repeat the second bit of information, I never heard this before, it's the first time I'm hearing it. Um, so your mitochondria can make melatonin outside of the pineal and the gut. So I did not know this information, that's great. The, the mitochondria itself can make it to protect the mite to protect the mitochondria itself, right? Why is it? Why is the mitochondria making melatonin too? Why does it do that? Do we know? Yeah, well, because it's anti-inflammatory. It's anti-cancer. Mm. It controls. So the health. What kind of controls? What I teach people is how to repair your mitochondria and how to make more mitochondria. So what controls that? Autophagy. Autophagy is the repair of damaged mitochondria. So to give you an analogy, your mitochondria are your engines that make energy in your body. When your engines are broken, it doesn't matter what fuel you give it. So on your car, if your engine conks out and you normally put in low test gas, is your engine all, all of a sudden going to get fixed if you put in high test gas? Mm, no. Yeah. And that's the same with food. So you can go from eating like a junky diet to eating healthier food. You'll get some improvement, but it's only going to go so far until you repair your mitochondria. So let's just say that your, um, your air filter gets clogged in your engine and it's super clogged and it's causing your engine not to work. You can change the air filter and you'll get a big improvement in performance in your engine. That's autophagy. So that's repairing damaged mitochondria that aren't working to their full potential. And then there's apoptosis. So some, let's say you're driving down the road at 100 kilometers per mile and you run into a cement wall. Car's totaled. Can't repair that. So that's apoptosis. The mitochondria is completely damaged. Let's get rid of it. Make new to grow new mitochondria. Make room to grow new mitochondria. Your melatonin controls that. Hmm. So the melatonin so, makes the melatonin makes new mitochondria too, as well. It protects the mitochondria from damage, right? Does it make new? It doesn't make new mitochondria, but it controls the programs. Okay, controls. Okay. That repair and and take out the really damaged ones to make room for new ones. Sure. Very interesting. Cool. So just to so for example, do you, what's the number one cancer for women in the world? Mm, breast cancer, maybe. I'm guessing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. What's the number one cancer for men? Oh, I know this because I've heard you talk with Justin about this. So this is prostate cancer, I believe. Is that correct? Prostate cancer, yeah. Yeah. So, so women, you can make local, more local melatonin in your breasts by exposing your breasts to the sun or wearing a kaniki, which is tan through. So you want to make that local melatonin in the breast. 
guys, same thing. You need to get some sun on your prostate. Because mm. remember, melatonin, it's going to improve your mitochondrial function. It's, it's anti-cancer. It's anti-tumor. Yeah. Okay. We know from, from research that women with breast cancer have lower levels of melatonin. Mm. That's why working shift, shift work, working at night, increases your risk for both those cancers yeah. and other cancers. Same with men. Men with prostate cancer tends to affect older men once, what did Harry say, as you age, your hormone levels go down. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a quick one whilst I'm thinking through. So that's melatonin at night time that you want to be high. But you said something interesting as well. You said red light. There's, there's, did you say something like the melatonin can be activated during red uh, night time? Yes, when there's nothing, no lights and no EMS. But did you say something like melatonin can be activated with red lights as well? Was that, was that, did I mishear you when you said Thank that? You. It can be made. So I just read, uh, it's yeah. pretty new research. Please tell us about the, that. Very interesting. I think the website is melatoninresearch.net. So oh. it's, it's pretty new. I think we need more research. But there was one study hmm. where they had a um, test group of people. One of them was exposed to red light. And one of them was exposed to, it looked like red light, but it had different frequencies in there. So the test group exposed to red light produced higher levels of subcellular melatonin. Oh, so awesome. in those cells. Yeah. Huh. And, and that would be a nighttime. But it produced more from the red light at nighttime you can, or at well, you, you could You make it during the day. Oh, right. You can make melatonin is during the day. So the oh. other reason you want to get in the sun in the morning, so you watch the sunrise. Mm -hmm. That sets your circadian rhythm. It's the visible spectrum in infrared light. The blue light goes, sends a signal to your eye. Tells your pituitary, it's daytime, release hormones. Then about 30 to 60 minutes later, UVA light becomes present. As it starts to increase, that's the off switch. It tells your pituitary gland to stop releasing those hormones. Mm -hmm. So the reason so many people today have poor hormone levels is because first thing in the morning, they look at their phone. Tells their pituitary to release hormones. They don't get any sunlight. They go outside, they wear their sunglasses. They're never, they're in their car with all the windows up and the air conditioning on. Glass, most glass blocks all UV light. Some glass only blocks UVB light. Mm. So my old, my, the car I had before the car I had now, I have these beads that are activated by UVA light or UV light. Mm. It would turn purple in my car with the windows closed. With mm. my new car, they don't turn purple. So it's a different kind of glass that blocks out all UV light. Yeah, I thank you so, for the UV, UVA beads quickly, just because I got some because of you. I watched you say that to Justin. I was like, I have to buy some. They're really cheap on Amazon too. And um, yeah, they yeah. change color um, with UVA. I think they're UVA induced. Is that correct? UVA induced beads. I, them for, I think that. Yeah, any kind of UV light, UV light will activate them. But this, in the sun, there's never a UVB without UVA. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the angle. As the angle goes up, UVA can come through the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. so a couple things are happening remember the blue light turns on your hormones the uva turns them off but the uva uva also makes other hormones so when uva light goes in your eyes it makes melatonin that goes into your pineal gland that's going to help you get a better sleep at night cool so it makes melatonin it's called ocular melatonin it's made in your eye it's the inter interaction of tryptophan mm. and uva light makes melatonin, it goes in your pineal gland where it stores it. Then in the absence of light at night, it's released. Then your body goes into a deep restorative sleep. Hmm. It also, UVA light goes in your eye, it also makes serotonin when it interacts with tryptophan. Your gut also makes a lot of that too. So if you're taking a lot of antibiotics, guess what? You make 80% of your serotonin in your gut. Now you're not making as much serotonin. And people wonder why there's a lot of depression going on. Just a quick one. So in the midday sun, it's got a lot of um, UV light and you're saying that makes serotonin. That's probably why people feel really good in the midday sun. The midday sun, particularly people go, wow, I feel amazing. That's probably because of the serotonin dump from the, the UVA activation, right? Well, you're actually, so it's UVA light. So that's, there's, there's something, something, in, and I don't, I don't know all the details hundred percent, but there's something about exposure to UVA light without UVB in the morning. Mm -hmm. That is very optimal for your hormone levels. Mm -hmm. So it also makes dopamine. UVA light with tyrosine makes dopamine. We were talking about that earlier. That's your drive, your motivation, helps you feel good, helps you think well. But UVA light is present all day, you know, 
30, 60 minutes post sunrise. And then, you know, a little bit, it goes away a little bit before sunset, but a little bit later, UVB light enters the spectrum. Your body uses that to make vitamin D, but it also uses it to make a whole bunch of other things. One of those things is beta endorphins. Hmm. Beta endorphins is a natural opiate that your body makes, which is one reason people feel really good in the sun. It's also released when you exercise. So people that get really hooked on exercise is because they're, they get, they get addicted. It's a good addiction because your body gets hooked on that release of beta endorphins. Mm. So one of the reasons we're seeing these higher addiction rates is because people aren't getting the sunlight. They're not naturally making that own, op their own opiate. Yeah. And they're they hurt their knee. When I was a kid, you know, I, I, I broke my wrist when I was a little kid. It was one of the most painful things ever. Mm -hmm. I was given Tylenol with codeine in it. Mm, nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Today, you get like a little bump on your hand and like a lot of doctors will give you Oxycontin. <laughs> Super powerful narcotic. Yeah. And guess what? All these people, they're not getting sun. They've, they've got low dopamine. We've got record rates of people becoming addicted to opiates. Yeah. Because they're not making their own. Another thing the sun makes are endocannabinoids. <gasps> I was just going to say that while you're talking. Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So endo endocannabinoids are also anti-cancer. One of the hottest supplements today in the U.S. I don't know what it's like in the, U in the U.K., but is CBD, cannabidiol. Yeah. That acts on your endocannabinoid system. So people today are starved from sunlight because most people have jobs where they work indoors. They're told that the sun causes cancer. Stay out of the sun. When you're in the sun, make sure you wear your sunglasses and put on your sunscreen. Yeah. So now you have a reduced capacity to make vitamin D, which is, that's the number one factor of your immunity. With low vitamin D, you get sick, you get cancer, you get all these different things. Yeah. Yeah. If you get skin cancer and you have low vitamin D, it's going to be a whole lot worse than if you get skin cancer and you have high vitamin D. Yeah. I read something recently that vitamin D protects you against sun damage from UVB and UVA, which makes complete sense. And, you know, but people won't understand that one because they think UVA, UVB is going to damage my skin because that gives me melanoma, skin cancer, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. So the other thing UVA makes is melanin. That's your body's natural sunscreen. Mm. <laughs> that's how, that's how, that's why you get darker. Mm -hmm. This is so, interesting. Uh, yeah, this is fascinating uh, information. I'm really getting my, I'm, I'm, I'm relearning and also learning new things here it's myself. So, you know, this is good. <laughs> yeah, good. Mm. Right. So um, I was going to ask you as well, do you want to tell us how, com well, first of all, actually I was going to ask um, about the sun. Um, you said it causes cancer and I, um, you, people are getting told to go away from it and all these kind of things. How do we as a society, um, how do you, or how do we um, get more sun if we're in a limited place where we've got our jobs, we've got nine to fives? Um, what, how do we prioritize? Is there any hacks that you know of apart from the blue blocking glasses we've discussed? I mean, when it comes to actual getting sunlight, is there anything we can do? Kaniki tan free shorts we talked about, but is there any hacks that we can do or things for time constraint that you've got any ideas on that one? Yeah, so a, a couple things. Um, today, a lot of companies try to be more flexible with their employees. Especially now in America, the economy is really good. So top, top employees are, are more competitive. So companies are willing, you know, it's been a couple of years since I've been in corporate America, but when I was in there, companies were willing to be flexible for good employees because they wanted to keep those good employees. So one of the things you can do is if you can arrange your work schedule around sunrise, so you can be outside, watch that sunrise. Mm -hmm. When you drive to work, even in the winter time, have your window cracked. If you have a sunroof, have that sunroof open. Why, why would it need to be cracked? Why would it need to be open? Just have interest for the audience. So let's say it's super, like where I live in the winter, it's super cold. Mm -hmm. And people, unless you're like having a smoke in the car, people would never open their windows in the winter time. So sunlight is unpolarized. And what that means is it goes in all directions. So you can have your window cracked just a little bit and you're going to get the full spectrum of sunlight in your car. Because remember, glass blocks 
UVA, UVA light or a, a portion of that spectrum. And a lot of glass also blocks some of that infrared light to make cars um, not heat up so fast, to make buildings more energy um, efficient. Mm -hmm. So by cracking that window, you're getting the full spectrum in your car. And you also want to have your, if you're able to, if you're like super blind, you need your, need your glasses, then, um, then by all means, wear your glasses. I don't want you to crash. Mm -hmm. But me, I, you know, I wear prescription lenses when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I, I don't need them. But if I'm driving, I'm in an unfamiliar area, I need to be able to see the street signs really well, I'll have my glasses on. But otherwise, if I'm just driving down the road, I'm, I, I can see well enough where it's, it's not going to put me at risk. So I'll, I'll, I'll drive like this. Another thing you can do is you can wear your glasses like this, because remember, it's the light from above. From top. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you see, you can do this. So that's, that's just a little hack, you know, not wearing your glasses when you don't have to. If you go for a walk, mm -hmm. don't wear your glasses. Roll up your sleeves. So I used to wear a suit and tie. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go out for lunch break, roll up, roll up your sleeves yeah. much as, as much as you can. Um, eat lunch outside. Maybe even unbutton your, just take your shirt off if you're able to. I get it for in some environments. It's just, it's really frowned upon mm -hmm. and you're not able to, but you know, another hack is work towards becoming an entrepreneur. So you work for yourself. You can set your own hours. And you can work outside if you want to. Yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. So I'm, try I'm working towards building my own business. So I'm doing a lot of sun things, but it's all linked into my health. So eventually I'm going to live a lifestyle where I can afford to do this full time and um, yeah, be with the sun all the time as much as possible. So Yeah, it's, so not only are you, are you hacking you know, your, your career by being an entrepreneur, but you're hacking your health because you have a whole lot more flexibility. You're not in these buildings where you're exposed to high levels of you know, the, the toxic lighting Plus, everyone has a computer. Where I worked, they wanted everyone to be completely wireless. So there was like full Wi-Fi signal like everywhere in the building. So you can go from one meeting to the next with your laptop and, you know, be totally plugged into everything. Mm -hmm. So these um, in office buildings, the windows don't open. So it's getting a, it's having the discipline. And this is actually going to make you more productive, too. So having the discipline to get up and go outside for just a quick few minutes every hour, mm. you know, just sitting for eight hours straight, an hour of sitting completely shuts down your, your blood circulation and it turns off certain uh, hormones in your body. So one of those hormones, I forget the name of it, but it basically goes around. It's like a Pac-Man. It eats up these fats, the triglycerides in your blood and it converts it to energy. So you don't have that happening when you're sitting for eight hours straight. So if you can get disciplined about going out, get up every hour, go out for five minutes, do a stroll around your building, you're going to increase that circulation, you're going to get some sun exposure, you're going to sink, reset your circadian rhythm, yeah. you're going to make a little bit of vitamin D, you're going to make these other hormones that we're talking about, you're going to increase your dopamine, your serotonin, your, your beta endorphins, your, your endocannabinoids, things like that. On your weekends, when you're not at work, spend time outside. You know, instead of sitting on the couch watching Netflix all day, get outside, go to the park, go to a public pool, go for a hike outside. You've got to reconnect with nature. Yeah. And where um, I did a Facebook post yesterday, it was on an article about millennials. So millennials that after age of 27, they're seeing a massive decline in their health. They're seeing much higher rates of chronic disease, things like diabetes, hyper, hyperactivity, so things like ADD, ADHD, hmm. um, obesity, arthritis, all these different diseases, they're happening at kids in their 20s. So for me, it started happening in my 30s. I'm Generation X. I was able to turn it around. But a lot of people, this stuff is happening to them they don't have the proper information or they're not taking the right steps to turn it around. And it doesn't get better if you just kind of like keep doing what you're doing and hope that it's things are going to turn around. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I see the same thing with the youngsters nowadays, and I've got the energy of a 20-year-old, not to boast, and I kind of look young too for my age. It's only because of the health protocols I do, um, most of them which are based around light. Um, you know, the Jack Cruz, what you preach about, um, it's, it's so powerful. And ultimately, I think that diet is great, but I'm, I'm with Jack Cruz a bit. Like, I think that light is more powerful than diet. And uh, I, I think even within our health communities we have on Facebook and a lot of people I talk to, people don't, are not there yet. Not even within our communities. People are like, well, diet's the most important thing. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I mess about with light a lot and it's very powerful. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good for you, Harry. But I mean, you just named it. It, it comes down to your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you've got to create a lifestyle that is going to expose you to the right kind of light so your, your body can be optimized. And yeah, do you want to eat a good diet? A hundred percent. But it's like we said before, if your engines are broken, the fuel only does you so much good. You got to fix your engines and, and you got to keep your engines healthy. You don't change the oil in your car. At some point, your engine is going to seize. If you don't get the right light in your environment, exposed on your skin, your engines are going to seize, your mitochondria. And here, here's the one thing about mitochondria most people don't know. You've got a lot of flexibility. So in your cell, so your mitochondria has different, different zip codes. The number one uh, killer in America is heart disease. That's where you have your highest density of mitochondria. Mm. Um, brain disease is, I think, number three right now. It's fast approaching number one. That's your second highest density of mitochondria. Mm. So in your individual cells, each cell has a function. You have clumps of cells. They make up your organs. A massive clump of cells, that's, that's your organ like, like your brain, right? So in an individual cell, it's got all these mitochondria in there. You can have 60% of your mitochondria not working, just 40% of your mitochondria working, and you can still maintain proper cell function. Mm. The threshold is right around 70%. So right around when you hit 70%, all of a sudden your cell is not function, functioning properly, properly. When you have enough cells in a particular organ that hits that threshold, that's when you run into massive problems. And that's why you can have people that look very healthy on the outside. They run a marathon. They get a heart attack. They're dead. Because their heart had that threshold of faulty mitochondria. Mm -hmm. They didn't change the oil in the car for too long. The engine blew up. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting information. I resonate strongly with what you're saying. Just a quick one to add on a little bit of geek information. I read recently testosterone. There's more testosterone receptors in your heart than any other place in the body. So when we optimize, for example, our testosterone levels with um, what we talked about before, we haven't talked about here, about um, getting sunshine on your genitals, a man, a woman, especially men, uh, to the midday sun, some reason that optimizes your testosterone levels, that also would help your heart mitochondria. But, you know, because if your heart's got the most um, testosterone receptors, there's a, for a reason, right, that it's got that. So Yeah, I didn't know that, Terry. Th mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, sharing that with me, and I, I'll have to do some research into it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, so that, that's a really good hack for men. And so there's a lot of evidence that just red light on the testicles increases testosterone. It improves the health of your sperm. And a lot of guys today are carrying their felt, their phones in their pocket. Yeah. I used to be one of those guys and I'll share a kind of a personal story. Mm -hmm. I, I was married before my ex and I tried for six years to have kids. At one point for several years, I was carrying, I had two cell phones. I had my personal phone and a work phone. I had a phone in each of my pockets. So I was basically microwaving my, my testicles mm. 10, 11, 12 hours a day. Mm. And a lot of guys, you know, I'll share that with, you know, you don't want to carry your phone in your pockets. It's going to damage your sperm production. Some guys will be like, well, I don't want to have kids. So that's fine. Huh? Well, guess what? You also make testosterone in your testicles. And most guys I know, they want to have good testosterone levels. Yeah. That's what gives you your body definition. That also gives you your drive. It also plays a role in your bone density. Ladies, you need testosterone too. Not as much as men, but ladies need it to also feel good. If you have really low testosterone, as a lady, you can lack that drive. You can have, you, that, that can set you up for osteoporosis because you need testosterone for, for strong bones. But ladies make the majority of their testosterone in their ovaries. So for a lady to carry their phone in, in their pocket, not as many ladies do because they tend to wear tighter pants or they, they won't fit, 
mm. fit a, a phone, but a lot of them wear it in their back pocket. Most ladies wear it in their breasts, though. Most ladies have quite a lot of them put them in their bras. Like, that's a very... Oh, uh, yeah. So that's, I mean, just talk about mm. not, not a wise thing to do. Mm. Yeah, setting you up for, for breast cancer. But getting your, your testicles in, in the sun, mm. and that's why in the morning when I do my morning routine, I'm doing my gratitude practice, my meditation. Um, I'm inside my apartment. No one can see me, and, and I'm able to be totally naked. Because I want to get that sun on my testicles mm. to increase my body's testosterone production. Because testosterone is also anti-aging. Mm. So we have like there's a lot of BS. If you go far enough back in medicine, a lot of medical doctors were blaming high testosterone on prostate cancer. Yeah. And putting and to this day, it's still practice. Doctors will put men on um, drugs to reduce their body's testosterone production. To help combat prostate cancer, which is I think I think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite. High testosterone, in my mind, prevents majorly pre prostate cancer. It's a complete opposite to me. I might be wrong on that, but that's how I feel. Oh yeah. So now we know it's not true, mm. but you know a lot of doctors don't keep up to date with the latest literature. Mm. And I've there are men I've talked to that have been put on older gentlemen, and they've been put on these drugs to reduce their body's production of testosterone mm. to help them fight prostate cancer. So it's completely moronic. Mm, agreed. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, we've been talking quite a while. It's just totally fascinating, interesting to me. Um, I, just before we go, I'd like to ask you: um, Is there anything that we haven't covered before we get to covering your your internet and um, what you promote and what you're about? Um, last, would you like to leave with a really important message? Something I didn't ask you. There was something you want we didn't get around to covering in this uh, that you think is really important to get out there, information-wise. I mean, Harry, I think you asked a lot of good questions. We hit on all the, all the big things. Mm -hmm. um, mitochondrial health, mm. protecting your circadian rhythm, reconnecting with nature, and coming up with a way to create a lifestyle that's going to allow you to maintain all those things. Yeah, so good. it's, I get it, you know, people have, most, most of us have to work today. And some of our jobs are, are demanding and they prevent us from living that lifestyle. Um, when it, you know, when I take on a new client, I have these five rules for them. One of those rules is innovate health. And what I mean by that is we all have our, our shit we're dealing with. Everyone's super busy. You need to figure out a way to innovate these things into your life to work around your schedule so you can reap the benefits so you can avoid getting sick. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's uh, fascinating. And, and you've, you've blown my mind there with this information. Thank you very much, Nathan, for coming on. Before we leave, um, can you please tell us where people can find you? Are you on YouTube, Facebook, and have you got a website? And uh, give us all the information on where people can reach you, please. Yeah, so I do a majority of my posting on Facebook from my profile. So if you just search my name on Facebook, Nathan Walls. Um, also, I have a Facebook page called Journey to Optimal Health. So on my Facebook, I... I tend to post more kind of relatable things, just sharing my personal experience. On my Facebook page, I paste more scientific things. I'll share different articles, things like that. My website is journeytooptimalhealth.com. It's pretty out of date, but every now and then I'll update things. I have a YouTube channel. Search my name on YouTube, Nathan Walls. Cool. I, I post. Uh, I wasn't aware of a YouTube channel. I'll check that out myself too. So I'll type that one in and subscribe to you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, that's where I do a, a majority of my stuff. I'm on Instagram, but I'm not super active on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I think if you search journey to optimal health on, on Instagram, okay. yeah, that's yeah. where you can find me. So the, the main way I, I work with people is I share a lot of free information. So if you know, you're, you want to work on your health, but you don't have it in your budget to pay for someone like me, check out my free content, follow my stuff on Facebook, um, follow my YouTube videos, if you sign up to my website, actually a good reason to go to my website is to sign up to get on my mailing list mm. because I send out three emails a week. I'm not a super salesy spammy guy. You know, I do have some affiliate offers on there, but most of the information I share is the information that I post on Facebook and other social media. So that's kind of like a good way to get an aggregate of all those different things. But when you sign up on my website, you get my top nine biohacks that are gonna help you improve your mitochondrial health. And these, these are the, the core things I did to cure myself from Lyme disease, to uh, get rid of my heavy metal toxicity, get rid of candida. 
this is the core of what I teach my clients. You can get it for free. Now, if you want, if you want to rapidly speed up your results, if you want some more guided support, I offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So I call that the, my optimal or the optimal health protocol. So I take you through, I give you coaching, accountability, you know, hold you accountable to do the things that I tell you to do. That's the coaching part. And then guided support walking you through each of these things, having you share with me how you're doing these practices that I teach to make sure you're doing them the right way to maximize your results in the shortest amount of time. And I take you through four key elements. So element number one is self-image design. So before we get into any of these biohacks, the first part is your mind. You've got to have your mind right. So most people, Harry, at the end of the day, most people know what to do. Where they fail is not in execution, they're not doing these things. Mm. Life gets stressful. When everything's going great, it's easy to, to meditate. It's easy to eat well. Mm. It's easy to go for a walk and get your sun. But when all of a sudden you get stressed, what do most people do? They default to the old programs. Your self-image, it's your subconscious programs that control your thoughts, your actions, and behaviors. So people get stressed out. Some people binge. Some people will go to the pub have a few too many drinks, mm. drink off that stress. Some people will go to Netflix mm. and five shows later it's midnight and they're like, holy shit, I should go to bed. And then the next show auto starts. Mm. Yeah. That's a self image problem. So I start with identifying, helping you identify those limiting beliefs that are driving these thoughts, behaviors, and actions that are keeping you stuck in place. Mm. I help you create new behaviors that are aligned with the person you want to be. That sets you up for long-term success. Mm. So now you have new go-to things. When you get stressed, you create new habits. You do a breathing, you do some breath work, you do a meditation. You practice awareness, mindfulness. So you become aware of these things that you do that are getting you and keeping you stuck. And you change that, create new habits, create a whole new self-image. So that's self-image design. Number two is energy optimization. So in energy optimization, that's all about helping you optimize your mitochondrial health, looking at your nutrition, your movement, breath work, and different biohacks. Most of the biohacks are those top nine biohacks in that free PDF. Mm. Also looking at things robbing you of energy. Mm. We all have things in our environment that cause inflammation. Inflammation is the enemy of energy production. When you have inflammation, your mitochondria don't work. You don't make energy. One source of inflammation is stress. So you can eat a perfect diet, but if you have all this stress, guess what? That can make you tired. That can trigger your symptoms, whatever they may be. Okay, so that's energy optimization number two. Number three is brain optimization. You gotta have a healthy brain to perform optimally. You want to do what you can to keep your brain healthy so you don't get Alzheimer's disease, which is completely exploding. It's a horrible disease. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandmother suffered from it for six years before she died. Mm. You know, you don't remember your own relatives. You need someone to wipe your ass. It's a horrible, horrible disease. Brain optimization, I teach you what you need to do to keep a healthy brain. That starts with your gut. So when you have gut inflammation, guess what? You have brain inflammation. For yeah. some people, Brain inflammation translates to brain fog. For some people, it's depression. Some people, it's anxiety. Some people just, they fatigue easily when they're trying to focus and concentrate on a task or from reading. So increase, improving your brain endurance, getting your brain healthy again, keeping it healthy, making it work better. Hmm. That's number three. And number four is lifestyle design. It's working with you and figuring out the right habits, the new actions to add, add to your life that are going to become your new habits that are gonna continually build that solid foundation of health for you. So in the short term, you fix any symptoms that you're dealing with, you reverse chronic disease. In the long term, you continue to optimize your health. That sets you up to be able to accomplish the important things to you in your life because when you have low energy, when you don't feel good, it's very hard to get things done, to be able to raise your bar. So you want, to get, you want to get to a point, you don't just want to get rid of your symptoms. You want to get to a point where every year or continually you're raising your bar. Get yourself to a higher level. 
And you say, what's next? You keep on going. You don't just get to like one point and I'm done. I'm going to go back to my old lifestyle. It's a permanent change. And you continue to build on that and improve. Yeah, so cool. That's, That's the optimal cool. health protocol. Yeah, I was going to say, how long how, how, do you work with them on Zoom or do you do the video chats with them? I guess it's on the internet, right? It's all done. Yeah, I do Zoom. Uh, occasionally, people will just want to do the phone. So uh, either Zoom or, or phone. But I've got clients all over the world. Cool. I record the, the sessions so people can reference them. Mm. And uh, I work with people. The program is 90 days. We meet every week. We, uh, you know, figure out the, the core goals, the core challenges people are having, come up with, with uh, actions that are going to help get them, out, get them out of the hole, move them forward. Mm -hmm. And over the course of 90 days, those actions become new habits. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. 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 This is fascinating. Um, yeah, it sound, your program sounds amazing. I'm sure that it, you get live transformational customers and clients because your information is great, but it's, it's the way you're doing it from A to B to C to D. So you're not just going, here's the information and you do this and just let them go and then you know, not expect them to hold them accountable and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I highly recommend people go with um, yourself and um, many other people are doing great work. So this, this is uh, really um, powerful stuff. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you very much, um, for everyone for watching. Thank you, Nathan, for the information you've sent to us. Um, it's been uh, not, even just for me. I've learned so much. So you know, thank you very much for being here and sharing the space. And I hope one day in the future, maybe next year, year after, if you want to have another check in, um, we can do another one, bro, because this has been fascinating. Yeah, it sounds great, Harry. Well, uh, hey, it's really nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, keep up your great work, man. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Holistic Health, Harry Alkalis, realized with Nathan Walsh. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye.